He asked uh, them to roll the camera, and instead of calling action, he would say, and he said as I sat next to him, entertain me, please. At about the same time, Diane Ladd appeared in the film Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, for which she would receive an Academy Award nomination. Laura was an extra. This time, she got the nod from director Martin Scorsese. They had to do the scene 19 times, so I had to eat 19 ice creams, and um, my mother was obviously very nervous that I was going to get really sick. And at the end of the 19th take, Scorsese in front of me said to my mom, this kid ate 19 ice cream cones and didn't throw up. She's got to be an actress. When we return, Laura sets her sights on an acting career. I'm Mary Steenburgen. We're back with intimate portrait Laura Dern. Martin Scorsese said I was supposed to be an actress, so I think that always kind of stayed in my mind. I didn't, for a couple of years, it didn't come up um, again, but I'd obviously remembered it because I called upon that comment to my mother later when she said, no way was I going to be an actress. And then, against all my protestations, I did not want her to be an actress. She becomes one anyhow. You could be a doctor, or a lawyer, you could be a painter. There's so many things. Why, why an actress? And I said, it's my destiny. Laura would always express to me, like, I know that she's trying to, you know, protect me from the hard times of this business, but I, I love it. I, I don't want to do anything else. So she came back to me and she said, look, if you want to be an actress, then it takes a lot of work. It's not a game that we play. So if you want to be an actress, then you have to study for two years. And in that time, you can't have a horse. You can't choose horseback riding as your hobby. You have to choose acting, and you have to go to class every weekend instead of being with your friends or going horseback riding. And if you do that for two years and you still want to do it, then you can pursue it, which was brilliant. And everybody just thought that we were freaky girls who would go off to acting class. You mean you're not on the cheerleading squad? You're not trying to be a song girl? You're not trying to run around to be really popular or do anything like that? We're like, no, we're going to go to our acting class and study our lines. During this period, Laura was living through a real-life drama, some unfinished business with her father. I made huge mistakes in my dealing with Laura the first 10 years. Laura had her mother and her grandmother every day of her life until she was 10 and had me about honestly every other weekend. We didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and that was really important to me. So uh, I wrote him a letter. It was a cry. I mean, she said, I have a dad and this is hard for me, but I, I have a dad and I, uh, I don't know him, I have never been with him, you know? And uh, I want to go to dinner with you. I want to go out with you. I want to come stay with you. It was a slow evolution from 12 to about 16, 17. And then it took a dramatic turn. And from that age until now, we are extremely close and have a wonderful relationship. She worries more for her mom and her grandmom and me than anybody I've ever seen in my life. I mean, she cares for us like uh, Sister Kenny. You know, I mean, I think I have polio when I'm around Laura. I think that she was proud of herself. I think it was one of the things that also motivated her, you know, in her work. In a way, it's a risk. I think the thing that excited me most from that time on was two things happened. I joined Laura spiritually, and I joined Laura on a common playing ground, which was ultimately a business, an art form, and a way of life. Uh, and yet, I didn't encourage her to be an actress. Laura's determination surprised both her parents. Laura was gonna come to visit us, but she called me and she said, could she come a day later, because she had an audition. My first professional audition was uh, for a movie called Foxes, and I uh, 
read for the casting director and they asked me to come back and read for um, the director and the producer who were Adrian Lyne, that was his first feature, and David Putnam. She actually went in to audition for one of the four girl leads. And they loved it and they said incredibly complimentary things and they asked me how old I was. She was too young, but she, you know, tried to make them think she was 16 and she looked 16. I was 11. So I said I was 14, about to turn 15. My first major lie. And all I heard was, you're too young for the part. But he thought you were so great that he wants to give you a smaller part in the movie, which is of a character who actually is 14, 15, your age. Jodie Foster was cast as one of the four leads. She had, I think, probably one of the best lines in the movie where she's telling another little kid who's about a year younger and saying, you know, discussing diaphragm versus birth control pills. And uh, she says, you know, I prefer the diaphragm because you never know what you don't know, you know. So David Putnam comes up to me and he says, Laura, this is a little bit delicate, but um, the young lady you're working with is 13. She's a little younger than you because they don't know I'm 11. And um, we're wondering if you could talk to her a little bit about, you know, this, the dialogue and what it means because she doesn't understand it. So David Putnam's standing there, and I turned to the girl, and I said, oh, okay, you mean all this dialogue here? Okay, you know when you breathe? Well, your diaphragm and David Putnam just turned blue. Laura soon won a lead in the cult classic Ladies and Gentlemen, The Fabulous Stains. A movie that no one's seen except my mom and her mom, probably. One great actress came into the mix to, uh, to show us what acting was about and remind us that we were you know, doing a movie, which was Christine Lottie, who played my mother. Even then, um, she was amazingly focused and committed and brave. And at 11, it was really uh, something to behold. The film about three young girls who form a punk rock band included some members of real life punk bands. I saw drugs for the first time in my life and they were everywhere and they were aggressive. I remember one guy who's a musician who was in the movie said to me, I've ruined my life on it, so you don't need to do it. And I've never done a drug in my life, and I never will. And I'm so grateful for that experience because I was, you know, going to high school in the late 70s and early 80s. I'm sure it was the most painful time of my life. You're trying to make everybody happy, you're trying to be liked, and yet you're trying to be yourself. There were the really popular girls, and then you had the geeks. And we fit into that place. The only difference is that we thought that it was so mean how the popular girls would treat some of these other girls. So we always be made friends with these other kids because we saw them as human beings. God bless Belina that I had her because at least I had someone to talk to, but she wasn't in my home every moment and I was an only child. I attribute getting through those lonely times in my room to dogs and Lucille Ball. Dogs, Lucille Ball, and Grandma. Laura's entry into the adult world came earlier than most, when at the age of 16, she won the part of a pregnant teenager in the film Teachers with Nick Nolte. In order to work, she had to legally declare her independence. My mother was somewhat terrified by this, feeling her rights were being taken away uh, uh, from her. But um, I was able to become an emancipated minor, and I had finished all my high school requirements at the time, which really helped that go through. In time to work with another great director, Peter Bogdanovich. The film was Mask with Eric Stoltz and Cher. She seemed to be right for that part, you know. She seemed to be the part. She worked really hard. I mean, she went and worked with some, some blind children and, uh, and threw her eyes out of focus and lost a couple of points of her eyesight because of it. And I wanted to go back in on a third audition, I think, to show Peter Bogdanovich that I could, you know, play the character well. Many people thought she was blind who saw the film. Could not believe she was acting. Mask was based on the true story of Rocky Dennis, a victim of the deforming disease, Lyonitis. They're 16 years old. They've met and fallen for each other at summer camp. Two or three of the best lines in the picture just came up because it was Laura. And her parents come to pick her up. She's so excited for them to meet Rocky, this boy she loves. Hi, Rocky. 
Right. Looked to me like she wanted to say okay. something. So I leaned over to her and I just went over to her in, a, in her ear and I said, I want to kiss you, but my parents are watching. I understand. I do too. Well, you know, that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been Laura.